Hey guys, uh, my name is Tom Shepard. I am with the TCA family. I'm one of the executives at the Addis Campus and we're here today coming into your living room with the new athletic director, Coach Barham, and the Bluegrass Miracle uh, guy, Marcus Randall. And we're talking about athletics today, Coach. We're talking about uh -huh. how uh, you guys uh, are gonna make a difference. I'm excited, I can't tell you how excited we are about what's happening, the buzz that's going on the other side of the river, about you guys coming in and getting to meet you guys and seeing your backgrounds and, and what the school's produced in five NFL guys to date and what's going to happen in the future. It's just exciting. And so um, tell me, as the new athletic director, what your vision is uh, in sports, the direction we're going, what we're looking for with kids. We want to bring this to to the houses out there uh, all over Baton Rouge to say, hey, we've got something at this school that sets us apart. And man, I'm excited. Tell us what your vision is. Well, when uh, Pastor Mark Sturmer approached me and I wasn't really that interested until he told me that the reason he took this campus was to reach into the city of Baton Rouge and help the kids make a difference in the city of Baton Rouge. And so since I've been back, the the shootings and the turmoil going on in the city of Baton Rouge and seeing our youth choosing streets and guns and drugs and violence over the athletic field and the chance to go to college and play at the next level and get a college education. And if you're fortunate enough to play at the professional level. So that got my attention. That's what I love doing. I've helped over 50 kids get to the next level. I got 12 that made it to the NFL. And so, that intrigued me, and when he told me about the Arete Scholarship Program and, and the purpose to go and help kids that are in the public school system have a chance to go to the private school and get a Christian education, uh, I was sold. Uh, that's exciting. This school's produced five NFL guys. You've produced 12 in your, in your, in your lifetime. Tell me a little bit about the uh, work you did in Tennessee, I believe, that you guys have done over there or where you've done across the United States well, helping kids. Yeah, born and raised in Memphis and, and – uh, played ball up there and then uh, I guess I I moved here in 95 my old coach actually took the job at Westminster and taught me into moving down here and it's kind of been home to my kids uh, I did go I was here in 2000 to 2002 coach Michael Clayton who went to LSU played with coach Randall and uh, they won a national championship in 03 Marcus I mean uh, Mike was the 15th pick in the first round with Tampa Bay uh, Rufus Alexander Played his career here at, at what was Christian Life, now the Church Academy. He went on to play at Oklahoma, was an All-American there, and, and signed and played with the Vikings. Um, so two guys that I coach here, Rashawn Matthews, that went here before I coached here, that is good friends with Coach Randall. Um, played here, played for the Bears, played at LSU. So the rich tradition, I mean, there were Stephon LaFleurs that played here, played at Louisville. I can go on and on and on. Man of the That's tradition awesome. and and we were a powerhouse back then and so to see where the state of the program is you know that challenge motivates me to get it back to where it should be and get the alumni coming back in and the way you do it is you got to go and, and and get the kids that want to play at the next level they want to be coached hard they want to be challenged in the classroom they want a spiritual foundation that's going to last their lifetime. Because if you play in the NFL and make millions of dollars and you die and you don't know Jesus Christ, nothing matters. So to be able yeah. to do that here to where we can literally take a kid that may be in a, in a situation to where his home environment doesn't give him that chance, now we have a family at this school to where academically he's challenged, he's accountable to do his schoolwork, he has chapels, we have a church, he's going to be introduced to Jesus Christ and understand how to walk and follow the Lord and how that's going to be his rock in life. And then in the weight room is where I've been able to develop kids and give them that extra chance to make them just a hair stronger and faster than the kids they're playing against. And the ones that are fortunate enough to go and receive a scholarship to college, right. that's worth over $100,000, free education. A lot of kids I've coached, they were the first one in their families to go to college and get a college degree. And so, you know, yeah, they all want to play pro ball, but not everybody gets that chance, but it opens doors. Right. And sitting next to me, Coach Randall is an example of that and the doors that it opened for him. And uh, he was one of the first guys when I took the job that I targeted to get him to come in here because his reputation of helping kids is, is, is good or better than mine. And so I've been gone from Baton Rouge for 
over 12 years. So reconnecting with Coach Randall, we begin to talk about what if we came together instead of trying to beat each other? What if we came together and build something that would be incredible in this city and change so many lives and stop all this killing of our youth and let them see that there's better ways than the streets? And so we started talking, and uh, it was obvious from our first conversation God was in it. It took a long time, but God's time is always perfect. And uh, so I'm going to take over the basketball program. Coach Randall's going to take over the football, so I'm going to help him with football instead of him helping me. And we're going to just basically use both our strengths to help and reach so many kids and, and help them reach their true potential. We're talking about uh, kids, how to help those guys, the um, the fantastic opportunity of the Arete Scholarship that is going to be able to bridge these kids who are never going to be able to be afforded an opportunity in a private school. But we've got guys who have a love and a heart for God come together, Coach Barham, bringing in guys uh, like the Bluegrass Miracle. And Marcus, tell us what... Um, where your love for kids started and, and your and your passion to want to come in here and take this program to the next level with Coach Barham. Tell me tell me a little bit about that and your love for that and just your desire. You, well, as a student vision. athlete um, at LSU, um, being from Baton Rouge, um, I went in, um, wanted to be an engineer major, and around my junior year, I decided that it just came to me that I wanted to be able to uh, come back to Baton Rouge and be able to coach and teach a lot of the kids that's in this area and be able to give them some of the things that I was learning at that time um, from a lot of great um, coaches, a lot of great um, professors that I was having at LSU, um, Nick Saban, Jimbo Fisher, the, um, the whole student athlete um, center, all of those guys. And I wanted to come back and give a lot of that information, a lot of that knowledge back to the kids in the same area in which I grew up in. Um, I knew coaching was going to be a great platform to do that, to be able to gain a lot of those kids' uh, attention. And then be able to, once I have their attention, I could be able to give them all the good principles and all the other things that I learned that, that could help you off the field as well. Awesome. That is awesome. So coaches, yeah, Coach Barham, athletic director, Coach Marcus uh, in the football area, uh, tell me, tell me what sets you apart. What's going to set you guys apart from the other schools you're competing against? What, what do kids? Why would a a kid want to come to this school? What what is what is the reason for? What's the driver? Well, I mean, there's a lot of good schools and opportunities out there, and there's a lot of good coaches. I mean, it's nothing that necessarily says makes us special more than others. But what I would tell you. Nobody's going to love your kid more. I'm going to treat them like they're my own son. Nobody's going to be tougher on your kid. Nobody's going to hold your kid more accountable in the classroom. You know, I'm going to pour what Jesus Christ has done in my life into their life. That's what I know Coach Randall's about. So I I don't ever negatively recruit. I just tell you this. Nobody's going to love your child more than this staff is. And sometimes that's tough love. But the best thing ever happened to me was when my coaches tough loved me. I wouldn't be where I was if it wasn't for that. That's so huge. that's my selling point is we have something that not many people have and the fact that we have a staff that's going to love your kid. Your kid comes first. It's not about – Coach Randall's won his championships. <laughs> He's got his rings. He yeah. played at the highest level. He played professionally. So I find most of those guys, they're not trying to relive what they didn't get to do through kids and using kids for their own personal um, – We've been able to do it at the highest levels. It's about helping kids reach their dreams and goals. And if you do that with enough kids, they'll win. And that takes care of itself. So I would say that the biggest thing we have here is your kid's going to be loved. We're going to take him as our own child. We're going to take him, I mean, places that nobody, he, nobody's ever taken him before. And being able to do that and pour into kids, that's what a parent wants to know, that their kid's getting loved, being held accountable. Um, you know, I've been doing this 30 years, and definitely the generations have changed, but I still find that kids will do whatever you demand they do. The kids haven't really changed. I think we've changed as parents and then technologists, but when you get down to the nuts and bolts, kids are dying to be held accountable. They're dying to be loved. They're dying to be given direction, like Coach was talking about. What he got at LSU, he didn't always get growing up, and that's what he began to see is, I want to go and give this to kids. That's awesome. So, you know, I think what will set us in, and it's like 
we get double the pleasure here because, you know, he was going to be a head coach again, and we we're going to be battling for some kids to come and play for us and then battling to beat each other. And being the humble guy that he is, and he loves the Lord, and you know what? Let's just do this together. It ain't about our egos. It's about how many more kids can we help if we do it together. So uh, I'm just – I'm appreciative of him and his heart and his humbleness and his desire, and, you know, that we can team up and make such a big difference in so many lives in this city. That's huge. I can't tell you how big that is for a parent who's got kids who are going to be playing for y'all that I know that a godly man is behind there. I've been I've been on a football field growing up in California, in Southern California, and, you know, the coach grabs me by the face mask, <laughs> pulls me to his face, and he's screaming at me, but he didn't, he didn't affect my eternity. And the fact that you guys are out there tough loving these kids, loving them unconditionally, on the field, off the field, but what you do echoes in eternity because those kids' lives are just like, man, to have you know a guy who has, who's made it to the big show and he's been a pro and has sent guys to the pros. These kids are starry-eyed. They're looking at you. You've got, you've got them. But the fact that you would point to Christ, families, listen, man, the fact that these guys point to Christ, to me, that's my seller in a school. To me, that's what solidifies our decision for me to send four of our children, six of our children in the whole TCA family and say, you know what, this is where we need to invest our life. Because if you're going to come down to pick a school, let's pick a school that uh, is serious about making a difference in their eternity as their number one priority, and then can bring them to the next level in athletics because they have that ability in their academics, they are concerned about that, that they're that they're, I've watched these guys I, I, during this last year a little bit peeking in on Coach Barm and, and his kids sitting there doing their homework on the bench in the locker room before he goes in there and lifts weights because it's a priority. Um, I've been in a lot of locker rooms. I don't see kids doing homework sitting there in the locker room. That is huge. That is a huge thing. And, and I'm excited about this season. I'm excited about what God's going to do with you guys. And Coach Randall, what, what would you say you – you would tell a parent um, that would, because I I spoke the whole time, cut right, you off. Right, no, it's good. You. Um, just to go back to the question that you mentioned about um, why I come here, what are some of the advantages of coming here? And I will say that this being a Christian environment, you really can't get this anywhere. I, um, I've been in public schools where they've taken Christ out of the schools, yeah. and um, and that's kind of a big deal for me. Um, and uh, that was one of the things when Coach Barm, he reached out to me to uh, come on board. That was one of the things that I, I have never been in a school setting like this, but I definitely um, had to take this opportunity because I get a chance to not only reach kids athletically and academically like I did before, I get a chance to to be able to put Christ in their life, be a, be a leader to show that I'm a follower of Christ first. So by me leading those guys, being able to lead them to Christ, I think that's, that's going to be an ultimate thing that I never – openly had the chance to do I've always done it but I mean you had to be you had to you had so many guidelines that you could do it on now I can openly be able to do that and be able to um and be able to give different foes of that um family environment here the um Christianity along with the academics and the athletics I think that um you know having those structured and having that in order it pretty much leads you to being successful and not only here at this time, but like you're saying, for eternity to keep moving on. Because one day the, the, the air is going to go out the ball for everybody and you're going to have to be in the workforce and you're going to have to take these same principles that you learned to be successful. And then as that moves on, then um, and one day we're all going to be, um, you know, it, it's the inevitable. We're all going to die and we got to have that eternal life and got to have that structure. So you got to have those things in order. And I find out when you have those things in order, winning comes with, with that. Winning comes, success comes with that. Um, we're going to always teach academics first here. Winning always starts in the classroom first. And um, and that mindset travels on to the athletic side of it as well. So Amen. being able to have that here, um, any parent out there that wants their kids to be a holistic kid at the end of the day, that want to have their kid be able to be reached spiritually, be reached academically, to have a family environment, um, and athletically, I think that's going to take care of itself. That's what we do. That's what we've shown that, you know, our stats have shown that. Um, so by those, by those kids coming here, I think you can entrust in us. Um, we are our love for kids. Um, like I said, I've been on this quest since about 10 years now, since, since I've stopped at Green Bay in 08. 
this has been my quest. I knew that um, my junior year going in, that this is what I wanted to do. So as soon as I finished playing ball, I was dedicated to coming and being certified. I'm certified in math, so academics is very big to me. Awesome. And, um, and being able to pass that on to the kids that's coming after me and being able to be that father figure, that big brother figure, um, to be able to have them trust in me so I can lead them. And like I said, I think the uh, staff that's here is going to be not the best in the uh, um, state. We're going to be up there at the top of that and wanting to be able to give those kids the, uh, the experience of a lifetime. Amen. Amen. In closing, your top three highlights in your uh, career. Top three highlights of your athletic career, what would, the, what would they be? What would those be? Okay, well, um, my first one was getting a, a scholarship because I knew that that was one of the things that was going to to propel me. Um, I came from a single-parent home. My uh, dad died when I was eight years old. So Man. being able to, to get a scholarship so my mom wouldn't have to worry about um, you know, the finances of going to college, that was one of, the, um, one of my highlights as an athlete. And then being able to, to play for the state school, LSU, um, playing quarterback there. Um, awesome. when I was told that I would probably never take a snap because at that time, um, and just being real, um, black quarterbacks wasn't getting that opportunity. So, um, being able to have that opportunity and being blessed with that opportunity and being able to use that platform now to be able to give other kids hope and be able to give that to, um, you know, my state school and, I'm, I'm going to have to give four. Okay, go ahead. The third one will be 2003. Like Coach mentioned earlier, we won the national championship, being able to bring that back to the state. Um, I think that was very huge, winning it in New Orleans too, mm -hmm. almost uh, in, yeah. in front of our home crowd. Hey, um, man, that was awesome. And, and in 2002, the Bluegrass Miracle, the play that I would never forget because I, I hear about it, hear different people's stories all the time. They tell me where they were, um, how they were feeling at the time, and ask me about how I was feeling during that last play. Um, after the coach being dumped and and they um and Kentucky were pretty much celebrating so so those highlights are um, things that'll stick with me for eternity but I also use those as as things just to, as attention grabbers to be able to lead other people to where we know that they should be and that that is really a highlight yes, sir. <laughs> that's awesome how about you coach Barham Woo, was way back when um <clears throat> Always, you know, when when you're on a team that wins a championship, it's like you you know. But for me, it's the relationships, um, you know, just the relationships with my teammates and how we would hate each other's back. I mean, that's why I still coach. It's just, I mean, you can't get that anywhere else. Um, my my high school football coach had the biggest impact on me. Still, to this day, he's a mentor of mine, and because uh, he lived Christ in his marriage. And the way he loved us, but was tough on us. He never let me get away with it. And I owe a lot of my success to him. My philosophy goes back with that relationship. Um, I went to a, basically a 3A size school in Tennessee, but the coaches worked together, and I got to play football, basketball, baseball, and I got to high jump and track. Wow. And it took them allowing me to do all. And nowadays it's all about specialty. And so my high school was – much funner and a greater experience than my college. When I went to play at Alabama, I wanted to play for Coach Bryant. He passes away my senior year, so I played for Ray Perkins. Alabama had their first losing season in 35 years. Wow. So it wasn't a good time to be at Alabama, but it was a dream to be able to get that scholarship and to go play at a place that at that time was in, in Tennessee, Alabama was it. And uh, – but it was really my high school and that I got to play all four sports. I won the state in high jump, which most coaches would have never let me go do that. You know, our our basketball and football team won the state. So it's just those accomplishments, but the memories of the relationships. And that's why I focus when I coach is building relationships with my kids. You know, 30 years, there's a lot of kids out there I've coached. And a lot of them will still call me, come see me because of that relationship. Awesome. And, and that's why I do what I do. So I would say my – my best memories are just those relationships. Man, we're excited to have you guys here. We're excited about your legacy. I'm excited about the fact that you guys both love the Lord. It makes me as a parent uh, relax a little bit and say, man, I know where my kid is on the bus. I know that those coaches ain't going to let them do anything goofy. <laughs> because let me tell you, there's a bunch of goofy, goofy stuff oh, going yeah. on out right. there. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. But to have guys of integrity who love the Lord, that's huge. That's huge for our families. Families, we hope to see you guys. We're, we're looking to uh, answer your questions. If you've got questions about the sports program, you need to coach, 
to get a, a hold of Coach Barham and the athletic director. You want to co talk to Coach Marcus, man, you call us up here at TCA in Baton Rouge, and we will touch base with you and get you plugged in to uh, make a difference. God bless you, and you have a great day.